In this presentation, I want to talk about data. So I'm going to talk about the data collection that's uh, active for Kleftra syndrome from the patient organization side mainly, and about another initiative that we started at the Jose Stefan Institute, the Rare Diseases Observatory. So regarding the data collections, um, so first, as already said in my previous talk, the Kleefstra Syndrome Worldwide Map. So the initiative that was launched from iDefine USA and now all of us patient uh, advocates are participating and uh, 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 sharing this with our communities and uh, because we really want to uh, to to have a real realistic number of Kleefstra Syndrome patients uh, that are out there. So uh, there is like a number out there that it should be around 1,000 cases, uh, so 1,000 individuals uh, diagnosed with Kleefstra syndrome. Uh, but uh, so this Kleefstra syndrome world, worldwide map uh, uh, is one tool that could then uh, um, say the exact number about the prevalence or try to tell us. So uh, Janaida, collecting caregiver reporter data. Uh, and we are going to hear more about this later on. Uh, another initiative from the US, because in the US, they are very active in the rare disease scape. They have a lot of platforms collecting data, specifically on rare diseases. And uh, one of these uh, initiatives, programs, is RareX. This is a nonprofit organization collecting caregiver reporter data, and they are collecting especially uh, neurodevelopmental uh, disorders data. So Klaestra syndrome is participating. Uh, another initiative is All Stripes. They are collecting uh, de-identified electronic health records. So uh, this is managed also from iDefine USA, uh, but uh, um, this is only active for those uh, living in USA, Canada, and UK. Uh, so uh, in these previous two years, in relation to rare diseases and Klaefstra syndrome, I was been mainly active in data in this uh, uh, direction. And uh, I want to share with you some lessons learned. So uh, I think that uh, we have to increase our efforts in relation to awareness raising about the importance of data collection, how this is crucial and how this is still, still needed, uh, not only to parents, but also to clinicians, because they are still, this awareness is still very low, I would say. Uh, and there's an increasing need for learning and training in relation to health literacy and digital literacy. So um, having a general overview, we are still lacking in these skills. And I also think that the data collection programs that are active need to adapt to different users because now are more or less general and uh, mobile versions are crucial for parents. Uh, to be involved, and they really need to be personalized for this kind, uh, for different aspects, different users. So, because they are global, of course, because uh, of these small cohorts on the nation national levels. And uh, there's the need to, uh, for better user experience, better user interfaces, enabling different languages, more data visualizations. So, um, and this is something that I came across some time ago. So the rare recommendations, it's a foresight study for policy uh, that was, this was a joint effort led from Erordis. And uh, for me, a particular important was the number seven recommendation, saying how crucial it is to optimizing data for patient and societal benefit. And the data used the data needs to be used to its maximum to improve the health and well-being of people living with a rare disease. And uh, another recommendation, very important, is the recommendation number 17, uh, increasing partnerships so and supporting the sustainable development goals. And this is something uh, that we will hear a little bit more in the next lecture. And based on these recommendations, based on this, this 
my personal experience, how I was trying to find more information, more data around, Cla uh, around Claystra syndrome and rare diseases in general. We started this project, the Rare Diseases Observatory, uh, and uh, later on I will show you the screen captures and also the live demo of the pilot version. But just to uh, say something about the facts. So the Rare Diseases Observatory is enabling easy monitoring of rare diseases, providing information and knowledge to empower all of the stakeholders in the rare disease field. And what we did, we did combine different global data sources. So first stream is global media news, then we have social media, we use Twitter, and then we have scientific publications. So for global media news, we have news from 2014, uh, and uh, we did this based on the event registry system, a news intelligence platform. Uh, that was also built uh, at the Jose Stefan Institute, developed. And uh, for social media monitoring, uh, based on the Twitter AP for academic research, we uh, uh, got the Twitter data from 2008 on. And for the scientific publications, uh, we have data from 2001 uh, from Medline, Microsoft Academic Graph, and Open Alex. And the methodology was that we extracted data from these uh, mentioned data sources for, uh, on 20 specific keywords. So there were 16 rare diseases uh, and four general terms like, like uh, rare diseases, orphan drugs, gene therapy, neurodevelopmental. And uh, in this first pilot version uh, of the Rare Disease Observatory, we are presenting we are focusing and presenting uh, 16 neurodevelopmental disorders. Clefstra syndrome, Kabuki, Colin de Vries, Felon Medermit, Pete Hopkins, Cornelia Delange, Angelman, Fragile X, Dravé, Red syndrome, ZB2, Pradervili, Singab1, uh, CTNNB1, Wiedermann Steiner, and Fox G1 syndrome. And we used elastic search and visualizations were uh, prepared in Kibana. We also did some sentiment analysis on the text. Uh, and uh, we used some open source library uh, and the media news were um, analyzed from event registry. Uh, so before showing you the results, some future plans, uh, we want to increase the number of monitored rare diseases. So now we have 16, but we still want to have this focus on rare neurodevelopmental disorders as already said, I think that they are a little bit under research and uh, uh, we have to focus on it. Um, another thing is that we want to make custom-made visualizations. Uh, and um, so now the data uh, fitted in this observatory is almost real time. So uh, we have the plans to make it real time, uh, add maybe new data sources, improve the uh, user interface, user experience, and uh, other things that we are going to extract based on focus groups and uh, based on feedback. So uh, when you will go to this uh, open available uh, platform on the, on the web, we will first see uh, a very colorful uh, visualization. So 16 monitored NDDs at a glance, because we really wanted to show which of these 16 diseases are the ones that are the ones that are like the leaders or like uh, uh, leading the way. And then who are the, uh, which are the diseases that are uh, slowly getting there, and which are the ones that are not yet there, not yet there. And this, uh, in a way, is uh, uh, like also showing for the community uh, where they stand, so uh, how much effort they have to put in. So, um, so showing the occurrence in global media news, social media, and scientific publication. And then the area with the circle represents the number of the news, social posts, and scientific publications. And here we can already nicely see that Fragile X, Red Syndrome, and Angelman Syndrome are, are the ones who are leading the way. Uh, here, just some short uh, screen captures. 
So deep, digging a little bit deeper with more visualizations. So monitoring global media news. Uh, we have here a nice visualization showing that, so we are here, mo um, we are here monitoring media news in different languages uh, all around the globe. And we have almost uh, 35,000 of news articles that are containing a keyword. So one of these particular uh, NDDs. Uh, and uh, here we have again Prader, really Dravé and Red Syndrome are the one uh, being in the foreground. Uh, here we can also see uh, uh, the published articles, news uh, uh, from 2014 till, uh, till today. So how uh, is how are the numbers in uh, publications? Uh, the sentiment showing if uh, these articles, these news articles are uh, like, uh, this text is in a neg negative, positive or neutral tone written. And at the end, then we have some raw, raw text presenting this news, uh, the source title, who, if applicable, who was the author and uh, the date of publication and title. Uh, so for Twitter, Again, the same uh, outline regarding visualizations and scientific publications. So in our da da database now, we have more than uh, 8 million of these publications. Uh, also a nice map showing, because we wanted to show also which of the research teams, uh, organizations are mostly active in research in relation to some particular disease. Okay, so now I will just show you this in a live demo. I just wanted to be safe. <laughs> just a second. Okay, so you can all visit this URL, rarediseases.ijs.si. It's open, uh, and I will also send you uh, later on on your emails. Um, so this is the landing page. Here is this first visualizations that I mentioned uh, uh, being very colorful. And uh, you can click here, seeing only uh, the most represent represented diseases in news in regarding, regarding the scale, uh, social posts, and then also scientific publications, just a little bit to play with. And Looking a little bit deep, deeper, rare diseases in global news. Okay. Okay. So of course I was interested about Kleefstra syndrome and uh, uh, looking uh, on the data, we see that Kleefstra is somewhere in the middle in relation to, to how many uh, news articles it contains. It's mentioned, so there are 168. Uh, we can then also see at the end these articles. For example, it was in April, it was published. This is an event that was organized from our colleagues uh, in the US uh, from iDefine. So uh, the authors, so the, the who, who prepared this article and where it was published. So it was in a post and courier. And uh, for example, Belfast Telegraph, here was also another article uh, uh, and another patient advocate on, for Cleveland syndrome from Ireland, Michelle, was mentioned here. So I think it's correct. Uh, moving to social media. Okay. Again, we are interested about Kleefstra syndrome and we see that we are quite active uh, in relation to mentioning Kleefstra syndrome as a keyword or as a hashtag on social media, on Twitter. We have uh, more than 9,000 social posts. Uh, and then we can also see about the timeline, where the, uh, when these posts were published, 
the sentiment analysis, the majority of these posts are neutral. Uh, and at the end, there, there you can also see, oh, sorry, specific, uh, specific posts. So when they were created and what they are talking about. And finally, I want to show you also the monitoring of scientific publications. So also here we see the most research and these uh, from the 16 that we are monitoring are Fragile X, Red and Angel Man, which is not really a surprise. Uh, but, uh, and looking for the Clevstra syndrome, we see that we have almost 400 um, scientific publications on Clevstra syndrome in our database. So altogether we have 15,000 uh, scientific publications mentioning and focusing only on this particular 16 uh, rare diseases and looking so for Clevstra syndrome. Okay, this is monitoring through time and it's very interesting and correct uh, to see on the map that the most important research teams are from Netherlands. So, <laughs> so it's also correct. So having more than 200 scientific publications published on Clestra syndrome and uh, US are then following and France. So and also here at the end, uh, we see then uh, the date of publication, the title of the publication, uh, the authorship institution and the uh, uh, identifier of this paper. So uh, this is something that we prepared as a pilot and uh, okay, sorry. And I will also, ah, just a second. Okay, uh, we also prepared a uh, Google form, it will be also sent uh, to your emails and it would be very appreciated if, we, if you could take five minutes of your time and just click over this rare disease observatory and then uh, provide some feedback because this is really needed. Okay, that is all from my side. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank you.